Hello friends. In our last video, we have seen design of footing. In this video, we are going to see how to design combined footings. As you know, in our last video, we have designed isolated footing and we have skipped our combined footing part. So, in this video, we are going to design combined footings in safe for this first we have to export our model to safe f2k file for that from your etab model you have to export click on file then export and here is option story as safe version 12 f2k file click on this then you can export any level of your model in in our case we are designing uh, we are going to design uh, footing so we select base then here are three three options export floor loads only export floor loads and loads from above export floor loads plus column and wall distortion we are going to select export floor loads and loads from above for our foundation design then select all the load cases and all the load combinations then click on ok select the file where you want to export the f2k file and then just click on save so we have exported our base reactions or our base level to save from etab now let's go to save open your save software and then here you can see the blank file and then go to file click on import here is the option save dot f2k file click on this then open the recently exported f2k file and click on open here is a point option which is invisible uncheck this invisible so that you can see all the points these are the points from our etab model that is our base points now you can check loading for each and every point if it is okay as you can see the loads i have just right click on the point let's see the footing we are going to design we are going to design this footing these two footing as a combined footing so these two points are our two columns base reactions so click right click on this point and go to loads as you can see here are load values for each and every cases we have exported from etabs so you can check every column reactions and tally with etab also now for start we have to define some material properties and section properties for our footing column so go to define here click on materials add new materials name it will name it as m25 concrete
just put the values or the properties of m25 concrete here and click on ok now same we are going to define rebar for that i am giving the name fe500 rebar put the properties of steel fe500 click on ok and another for you can add fe 415 but i will skip this we will define one concrete and one steel property only click on ok then let's check our basic depth of these columns as you can see the maximum depth is 675 so we can start from 700 depth or 750 depth and our column size is 350 by 700 and 350 by 700 so we need to define section properties so go to slab property add new property first you have to define your footing property i am going to define as f75 f is footing and 750 is depth select material concrete material and then select and here you can select mat or footing mat for raft or combined footing and footing for individual footing both are same properties we will select mat and depth 750 click on ok then add new property for columns we are not going to define columns we are just adding a step member of the depth of the footing the step member is the member which cannot take any forces so you can define a step member here as here is the option step member give the depth same click on ok click on ok then next is our soil properties for this here the soil subgrade properties add new property in our case our sbc is 300 so i am giving name sbc 300 and subgrade modulus is sbc in kilo newton per meter square divided by settlement we are considering here the settlement is 12 mm and spc is 300 so in our case 300 divided by Point zero twelve is two five zero zero zero. So we are just adding this value here and click on OK. You can check this value. Click on OK. Then you can check your load patterns and load cases and also check load combinations from e tabs okay okay 
let's start the modeling first we will add a step member for our column for this you can select here quick draw areas around the points so select your step member and give the size of column in our x direction we have 350 and y direction we have 750 these two are our column points so click on these points as you can see the step 750 properties and we have drawn the column sizes click on ok and then you have to draw the area around these two columns for this we refer our rcdc output you can roughly check the total area or you can calculate by adding these two areas and define the rectangle for one combined area so for that we just roughly calculate the total length and width of the maximum footing as you can see the width is 3750 and length is 6675 we can consider this as 66 6.7 6 meters so you have to draw lines around our column points okay Now, here draw beams and lines. Here is option draw beams and lines. Select on this. You can take none line to draw the reference lines for your footing. So, I am taking none line and just put the offset 1.875. Let's check 1.875. As you can see, these none lines are drawn are in our vertical direction. You can check the dimensions as you can see 1.875. So the Another dimensions are here two zero seven five. Two point zero seven five. And the next is one point nine. One point nine. and just complete the rectangle ok as you can see this is our reference lines and the rectangle is formed for the footing size now you have to draw Footing. So this go to draw, draw slabs and areas and select footing F7750 and then just draw a rectangle around these points. Click on OK. OK. 
our modeling part is done and you can see the properties for the footing you can check this in 3d also in extrude form as you can see okay now we have to assign soil properties for our footing for this just select this footing you can see here what is selected so you can just select one area the footing area and then go to assign slab data sorry support data and soil properties select sbc and click on ok As you can see here the soil properties are assigned you can check here also pro in as a assignment properties now our modeling part is done you can just uh, run the model for basic checks for settlement and sbc i'm just Let's uh, save this file. Here we have to check first. We'll we'll check displacements uh, or the settlement for this go to display show deform shape and just select the service load case that is dead plus live and give the range so it will show the contouring uh, different color forms as you can see here uh, this is showing from the range 0 to 12 plus and 12 minus so for red load and live load it is ok for settlement as you can see the values are in our range let's check sbc for dead and live load also select the load case then the soil pressures and just give the range click on ok as you can see the for the basic load case dead load and live load the size is sufficient or over safe you can reduce the size for basic load case but you have to check it for earthquake and wind cases also so that you can finalize the size now we have to check for earthquake cases also for this i have defined the service envelope for all the service cases for checking sizes only so go to first settlement then here select our envelope and first for maximum and the minimum let's click on apply 
as you can see for earthquake the settlement is increasing so we need to check for earthquake also so in the for the service envelope our size is okay for settlement the next is for sbc also for soil pressure so select the SLS first maximum and then minimum ones. As you can see, this is also safe for soil pressure. So, and one point is if you see the values, the values are much lesser than the 300 value our sbc is 300 you can reduce the size of this footing to match or optimize the size of footing to match our sbc let's change the size and the one thing if the both columns are very high difference in the loading you have to optimize the sizes from the both the column differently but in our case as you can see roughly we will check a dead load 478 and here the next is 400 so uh, in our case our both the column are same or equally loaded so you can reduce sizes from both the column sides simultaneously so we will just check 200 minimum size or 300 size let's reduce the size by 200 mm so for this i am creating a offset of 200 and then go to draw here reshape option click on the footing and then just drag the size now as you can see we have reduced the size from four sides by 200 now just click on run an analysis so let's check again we'll check for sbc directly soil pressure minimum and maximum this is okay and then let's check for minimum also as you can see uh, the sbc is increasing from this side so we can reduce our size from these three sides let's try another 200 then just click on run as you can see by as we reduced size the sbc all the soil pressure is increasing so we will check for both the minimum and maximum
we can reduce from this side also so let's try reducing from one side by 300 As you can see, we have optimized our footing size. Let's check for this size, our soil pressure. For maximum, it is okay. And for minimum, you can see, we have reached almost up to the 300. We can change the size and go further closer to the 300 SPC for time being I am stopping here we will finalize the size for our combined footing let's check our size this will be you can round figure these values So we will finalize these sizes or we can round figure this value. We can also reduce this value. So we will round figure this to 5 meter and this will be 2.5 meter. Okay. As you can see, we, I have changed the sizes to round figure the values. You need not to round figure, but for the ease of drawing, we can the round figure the values. So I have finalized the footing size. Now we have just give the our we have designed the sizes for our combined footing. So now for the reinforcement, we have to design the footing and for that we have to draw design strips so for this we have to break our analysis and draw strips so here you can see draw design strips here the draw design strips tab is open and you can see here the type of object strip then strip layer in strip layer there is a and b you can draw the perpendicular to each other a and b if you draw a as horizontal then you can draw b as vertical strips or vice versa and then next is strip design type column strip or a middle strip if you draw a strip uh, on column then it will be column strip and if you draw in the middle zone without column you can draw the middle strip here or you can just draw column strip all over no issues then here the strip start with left right left and end with left right let's draw a strip in this direction a vertical direction we can give one strip for this width 2.5 so we will consider vertical as b and we can give the full width or full length strip of 2.5 meter so as 2.5 my left width will be 
1.25 both sides and then just click on midpoint and click on the opposite midpoint as you can see our strip is drawn you can see the width here is the design strip object click on here show width as you can see the strip width throughout the width of the footing this is our strip b this is column strip you can change the rebar material we are going to define as fe 500 click on ok the next is our horizontal strips in horizontal direction so let's click on a and then in the horizontal you have to define different types of or different strips with different widths or you can just draw one meter width strips throughout the length then for horizontal strips we are going to select a and column strips for time being we are just drawing two strips horizontal for this select a column strip and for width as you can see there are different widths on both sides so we can change the width here first we are going to draw from here to here from this point to this point so this is our left side so here 1.3 in left side 1.3 also at the end it 1.3 and here 2.7 2.7 three five from in right side then just click this point and this point as you can see this is our width of our strip i have just drawn the reference line for each i will delete as you can see this strip is a column strip and we can change the material as you can see the column strip click on ok and then next same for the another strip click on draw strips in this case this width is 1.35 and this is 1 meter so we will draw from here this point to this point for our left is 1 meter 1 meter click on this point and this. sorry this is 1 meter 1 1.3 click on ok so you can see both the strips are drawn and you can change the matter so you can see the geometry here so our strips are ready then next is in design here is design preferences code you have to select indian code then cover in our case this we will consider as slab in our case for putting we giving cover 50 mm and the prepared bar size you can select as per your specifications the next is design load combinations so it will automatically select the strength combinations so we'll keep as it is click on ok now you can just run the analysis 
now you need not to check the spc we are going to directly check the strip forces for this you can select here or go to display show strip forces you can check moment uh, for each and every combination let's check for dead load and live load click on moment layer a and click on ok as you can see the you can see strip a layer moment values here same shear values you can check for vertical also for b layer and moment you can check the values for different load combinations the next is strip design display show slab design in this window you can see choose display type design basis strip basis we are going to you can design finite element based or design we are going to design strip based design and display type envelope or uh, reinforcement flexural reinforcement or shear reinforcement first we will check flexural reinforcement then next is rebar location shown show top rebar and bottom rebar reinforcement display type show rebar intensity area per meter width okay then next is the layer for which we can we are going to check the reinforcement layer a then the field diagram or values click on okay as you can see it is showing the reinforcement these values are showing area of steel per meter per unit width of the strip you have to convert in the number of bars or here is the option show number of bars you can select the bar size for that it will directly give the number of bars per unit width of the strip we will just always we always try to check for uh, area per unit width so you can easily convert it into bar diameter and spacing of the bar so let's check this and also for vertical also you can check throughout the length of the strips and you have to provide the spacing and bar size where it is required so let's check shear force also you can check there is no shear reinforcement required in our footing let's check to the layer b in vertical direction there is no need to provide shear reinforcement you can sometime if your footing dev is less sometimes you, the depth is insufficient for shear force so you have to provide shear reinforcement 
also now in our case there is no sure reinforcement required so we'll just provide flexural reinforcement you can see both the layers at a time also you can reduce depth of your footing to optimize or to change the ast required as per your requirement you can change the depth and redesign the section in this way you can design combined footing in safe any type of combined footing as the number of column different number of columns or the different positions of the columns you can design in this way so in our next video we will see the design of raft in safe thank you